In this chapter, we begin to understand the importance and significance of the health record, as well as learn a bit about the differences between paper and electronic records, and all of those involved in authoring them, as well as auditing and protecting them. First, let's define what we mean by the health record. Many still refer to these records as medical records, but the newer and more correct term is the health record since we are shifting our mindset to achieving and maintaining health as opposed to only focusing on medical issues. The health record is a comprehensive document that details a patient's identity and histories that involve all things health and medical visit encounters. This record details reasons for visits, tests, medications, complications, diagnoses, and treatments. This information also includes codes and other pertinent data to help explain a patient's history and status. Without these vital records, patient care would be incongruent and really kind of lack quality. Now let's discuss the main purposes of the health record. As we've already learned, it is vital in identifying our patient and therefore allowing us to continually treat the right patient at the right time. It also allows us to keep a continuous historical list of all services provided and notes of why each of those services were ordered. It basically proves medical necessity, which is required by our insurance providers to collect payment or reimbursement for those said services. We cannot simply order an x-ray of a hand without having some documentation that the hand is injured or not working properly. The payroll will look for this information in order to justify paying for that x-ray. And on a legal note, health records are often used to protect both the patient and the provider. Proper documentation can prove vital in court cases on both sides. A provider can prove that the best care was given to the patient by properly documenting all information, and a patient may prove negligence, on the other hand, if it was not. Most importantly though, the health record acts as an important communication tool between other providers, insurers, and patients. Without this documentation, we would see unnecessary tests, perhaps inaccurate services, and also more medical errors may occur. Now, while most of our documentation is done electronically these days, we still encounter many paper records and facilities that use paper documentation. So let's take a look at some of the differences in the documentation formats. The main reason we still see paper records is simply because it's what has been done for many years. It's easy and it's very convenient for providers to use as many um, to use as many don't wish to change the system. There are, however, many, many negatives associated with paper records. One of the biggest drawbacks is the accessibility of that record. With only one copy of a paper record, only one person is able to view or edit it at a time. This limits ease and quickness of access as well as could have potential deadly results. If I need a patient's record in the ER, but the surgeon still has it in her office uh, from last week, I will not be able to gather important up-to-date information that could be life savings. Because only one person has access at a time, it's more easily misplaced as well. Paper records are often missing, if not managed properly with strict guidelines. Since paper charts are large, and visible, that makes them more prone to security issues and confidentiality breaches also. Great care must be taken to file and store paper records in a way that prying eyes aren't tempted to see them. That leads to the issue of how difficult and expensive paper records are to store, find, print, copy, and retrieve. Secure cabinets and file rooms take up valuable space and must continually be updated and purged by staff, costing valuable dollars to any organization. And finally, one of the greatest disadvantages of paper records is the opportunity for medical errors due to poor handwriting or illegible note taking. Patient safety is at risk if documents can't be read and guessing has to take place. Even with transcribing, valuable time is lost for treatment and payment if handwritten documentation is used. As you can see, the benefits of electronic health record outweigh its drawbacks and help address some of the disadvantages of the paper format. Now we'll talk more about the EHR systems and regulation in a future chapter, but we must understand why we have spent so much time and energy transitioning in the last decade. Electronic records offer a more efficient and safer way to care for patients simply because it has built-in systems to allow for accurate and timely care. An EHR is available 
to multiple users at once, eliminating that need to share one paper file and the issue of missing information. A computer-based system also eliminates the handwriting errors and has built-in functions to make sure data is captured in a timely and accurate manner while protecting that patient's health. Quality aids help ensure patients do not receive medications they are allergic to or offer reminders for age-specific testing. For example, um, so why doesn't everyone already have a fully functioning EHR? Well, they're very expensive, and we still have some privacy concerns, believe it or not, even in this day and age. Purchasing EHR software is quite expensive, um, and there's a lot of lost productivity that you'll see while learning a system, and the vast amount of time it takes to train the staff. The privacy issues still must be resolved as well in order to meet HIPAA regulations uh, so you don't put your organization at greater risk. These security needs also bring expensive price tags, so implementing a quality EHR system is not as easy as one might think, even if the eventual payoffs will outweigh the cost burden. Now we keep using the term EHR, but we also hear the term EMR often. The two terms are used synonymously around the healthcare world, but they're actually a bit different. This table explains the differences in detail, but the easiest way to remember the main difference is with the first bullet items here. EMRs are thought of as one digital record used in one place, while an EHR is all of these types of records combined to be used everywhere and shared by everyone for the best possible care. For example, you may have an EMR at your dermatologist's office, but perhaps your primary care provider has an EHR that has all of your records from all providers in one place. This would include access to records from your dermatologist, as well as your hospital records and urgent care visits. EHRs are considered to be interoperable, which means they can talk to each other and therefore gain valuable health information from other sources. Okay, let's talk about who creates and uses these health records and why. Most notably, of course, are the physicians, nurses, and physician extenders. These are the people, people directly diagnosing and treating us. Of course, they will use the data. Um, they are also instrumental in creating that data. It's important to know the differences in these roles and who their support staff are as well. There are different levels of providers and nursing staff with different scopes of practice which means they have different roles in documentation. For instance, an RN or an LPM is not allowed to prescribe a medication, but a nurse practitioner or a PA, physician assistant, can. We will discuss this more in detail later. We also have a huge team of allied health professionals uh, who can add to the health record in some instances, but more likely use the provider documentation to follow orders and then deliver care. This profession, these professionals include physical therapists, x-ray techs, respiratory techs, lab techs, etc., just to name a few. Care coordinators, or case managers, also use the health record to both care for the patient and maintain accountability for that care. These team members are typically RNs who work in hospitals and act as a patient liaison between the providers and the insurers. They're responsible for continuity of care or coordinating the needs of the patient across multiple areas if needed. A primary focus of this job is to make sure all care that is necessary and needed is given. They work with insurers to make sure coverage is available and utilized to the patient's advantage. Health insurance plans, also called payers, use health records often as well. While they aren't typically viewing the records often in real time, they will review documentation to make sure the services were justified based on the diagnosis. Insurers use codes from the records to submit payment as well. So you can see how vital an accurate and detailed record is for the financial health of an organization. And finally, it's not mentioned in your book, but we as support staff need health records for our jobs as well. As medical administrative staff, we are often the front line for patient questions and care. We can help patients by learning how to access the documentation and create messages for our patients efficiently while working with our own, within our own scope of practice, of course. Now, let's learn a little about what HIN professionals do in the realm of healthcare. 
The functions of the HIT, HIM team have been fairly consistent since the 1900s, but the profession continues to grow, change, and adapt based on our technology and ever-changing regulations. As you may have noticed, the transition between paper and electronic records has had the greatest impact on the HIM profession in the last 100 years. Let's take a look at what the, trans, the transition, traditional functions, that is, of the HIM team are and how they have changed with the implementation of that electronic world. First, let's talk about record processing. In the paper world, if a patient is admitted to the hospital, the HI team would gather, HIM team would gather the old record and send it to the current unit. Then the care team would complete that record while the patient was under their care. Once the patient was discharged, the record would be finished and then moved to the HIM department for review. The HIM department would complete what is called a quantitative analysis to make sure all the doc documentation that's required is there. This includes notes as well as signatures, also known as authentication. If it's not done, the record is deficient and the care team must fix the errors before anything further can be done. Because this process takes place after the patient is gone, it is called retrospective processing. This can take a long time to complete, which means payment to the hospital is delayed since we can't submit our charges until the record is complete. The Joint Commission says we have 30 days to complete these records after the patient is discharged. After that, they become delinquent and providers may actually be punished based on the hospital's policy set forth by medical staff bylaws. Most hospitals try to complete this process much quicker so they can submit their charges for reimbursement, however. Now, in a computerized system, the HIM staff is able to process the record in real time or concurrently, which speeds up this process and corrects the errors before the patient is actually discharged, so there's less wait time. This is a great benefit of the computerized system. During the filing and retrieving stage, the HIM team has completed the review and is now ready to file the completed chart. This may require that other papers or images are added to the file and then assigned a file number to be placed on shelves. The file is called a unit record as all patient documents are filed together and indexed for retrieval later, if needed. Now in an EHR system, this step in the process doesn't actually exist since the computer system already files everything in real time and no one really needs to go and retrieve a physical file when the record is needed in the future. All one needs is access to the system to pull up a patient's chart. Now there's still some paper filing that must be done even with an EHR system. And in this case, we use what is called document scanning or an imaging system where a scanner takes a picture of the document and files it into that electronic chart. Much easier than pulling, punching, and filing a paper record, wouldn't you agree? Release of information is also a vital component of the HIM team responsibilities. Whether you use paper or electronic, this is an important function. In a paper world, the HIM team member would have to retrieve the physical file, then make copies of the chart as requested. Whereas in the EHR system, one needs to simply print the requested documents from a workstation. However, there are still policies in place to do either. In most circumstances, a patient must complete a release of information form, or ROI, to request records to be released. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about this later. As we may remember though, there are instances where the information can be released without a patient's authorization. Do you remember any of these? Think about it because we're going to discuss this later as well. Anytime an organization releases information, however, it must be logged. This is called an accounting of disclosures and the patient has a right to request this information. Privacy officers are trained to maintain compliance with these issues and are actually listed on those HIPAA forms to notify patients of their rights and whom to call if they have concerns. Now the coding function has dramatically changed in healthcare over the last few decades. We're going to discuss the, more on the coding functions later in the semester as well, but let's revisit what medical coding is as it pertains to the management of our health information. As we already know, coding of medical information or documentation is represented in a numeric or alphanumeric language. These numbers and letters translate the written words of providers. For example, what's wrong with the patient and what was done to the patient during the visits. 
into systematic and standardized language for payment and statistical purposes. Computers are highly efficient in the world of coding and have assisted in coding effectiveness and appropriateness over the last couple of decades by using computer-assisted coding programs that help assign codes based on the electronic documentation done by providers. We now use things such as groupers and coder software to help ensure that we're capturing the most applicable ICD-10 for diagnoses or CPT for procedures, um, codes for the encounter and patient outcome. Uh, encoder software helps assist the coder in assigning codes and acts as an electronic codebook and is often used instead of those large codebooks. Whereas grouper software works with the coding software to help categorize patients into a patient classification, which we're going to learn more about later. Now, don't let these advances in technology make you think that coders are no longer needed. On the contrary, coders have advanced in importance over the last 30 years because of the skill set needed to both utilize understand and check the work of such, such technologies. It's actually been said that coders moved from the basement to the boardroom because of the sheer importance of proper assignment of codes as they relate to the reimbursement in healthcare. Abstraction simply means taking data that has already been collected and summarizing it for later use. In healthcare, this is done when taking information collected on paper and inputting it into an electronic format for reporting purposes. Because of EHR implementation, there's not as much abstraction done today, although there is still some. It's much easier to simply input the data electronically, then complete it on paper, then abstract. However, do you still fill out forms when using healthcare? I bet you do. The amount and kind of data that is collected is based on requirements set forth by our regulating bodies. The Uniform Hospital Discharge Data Set, or the UHDDS, mandates that we capture a minimum set of information on each patient for each encounter while in the hospital. Page 46 will show you this list of data, but keep in mind, most healthcare organizations do collect other information that's not listed there. Can you think of any other pieces of data not listed in your textbook and why? How about a patient's religion? Have you ever been asked what religion you are in your hospital forms? Why would they want to know that if it's not required? perhaps so they can help you heal or help you be more comfortable when you need it and offer you resources based on your personal preferences. Again, the UHDDS only requires the listed info be reported, but we actually usually collect much more in a hospital setting. From this data, we can create what's called a master patient index, which lists all patients with basic information that can be used to find charts and records. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about the MPI and the EMPI later as well. Because the role of HIM has evolved and changed so much over the last um, years, there is a greater need for administrators to manage the information. In HIM, it's necessary to have compliance officers to make sure all regulations are met to avoid fraud and abuse claims that may severely impact the financial health of the organization. CMS can revoke participation if an organization is found to submit fraudulent claims, therefore eliminating vital reimbursement to that organization. Revenue cycle managers make sure that all money owed is collected in a timely and effective manner, while e-health managers make sure the data is collected in the most efficient and valuable manner. All job roles are vital to the patient outcomes as well as that timely reimbursement. Some other valuable roles emerging in health information management include those of security and privacy officers to meet federal regulations, such as HIPAA and high tech, teaching professionals who help train the workforce, Registrars that help enter and track occurrences such as cancer, traumatic events, birth defects, etc. for statistical health purposes. Another role is that of an auditor. Auditors are the checks and balances process for the HIM profession. Anything that has to do with documentation of patient encounter can be audited and is audited to make sure all regulations are met. Auditors can be internal employees, outside agencies, or even payers. The Recovery Audit Contractor, or RAC, is one such job that helps ensure that proper coding and reimbursement processing was done for Medicare patients and claims and came about to help combat fraudulent claims filing. We've talked a little bit about the history of HIM and its professionals, but it's important to know that healthcare is ever-changing and evolving and will continue to grow and adapt to the technology as it advances. Because HIM professionals have become one of the backbones of the healthcare industry, 
Credentialing and continuous education is a vital part. HIM professionals began credentialing uh, their professions in 1930, and those credentials continue to change names and requirements based on education and training. In 1991, medical records became known as health records, and AHIMA was born. AHIMA is still prominent today in the HIM workforce. AHIMA and those listed here, sorry, um, give the workforce uh, professional organizations, and HIM professionals it provides guidance, resources, and expertise in all areas of HIM, with specifics, of course, depending on the organization, uh, as you see listed here. The education and training for HIM professionals varies depending on the roles. Most have at least an associate's degree with certifications, and others must have either a bachelor's or master's degree. As in most professional settings, the learning is never done. And in order to maintain your certification, several hours of continuing education credits are required annually to stay up to date on that profession. Now, your textbook has a great table that breaks down the required education and, and or certifications required for each role, as we've discussed. So take a look here at what is required for each. As you can see, not all roles need formal education. Some can be earned on the job or gained through years of experience. Some of these professionals start out in other roles in healthcare and obtain certification by working their way up the internal chain by completing employer-based training. A lot of coders do that. However, an associate's degree is a great starting point to get higher on that level of HIM professionals. And just to wrap up this unit, let's remember that the goal of health information is to document the patient encounter and therefore make sure the patient has the best possible care and outcomes based on that documented visit. Whether the records are on paper or electronic, it's the job of the HIM team to ensure that they're accurate, timely, and of high quality. Because of this, our HIM professionals must be educated and maintain credentials that ensure patient safety as well as organizational health.